and welcome to Yarn Lane on this lovely first day of winter's morning. Perfect, perfect morning for knitting or crocheting a baby blanket. Now, um, if you haven't watched before on Yarn Lane, this is a new channel. Well, we've only, this is only our second month. It's about all things yarn, so mainly knitting and crochet, but other things yarn too, because there are lots of other crafts that we've been covering. Um, so it works in exactly the same way as Sewing Street. If you want to buy, the best place to buy is on the website. So if you go on to yarnlane.com, if you click on watch live, then all the products that we're going to be selling can look, as you can see, if you scroll down, there they are. So that's the easiest way to buy because everything that we've got that we're going to be selling today is listed below the watch live page. So you can, so you can see it there. You can also phone. We've got a UK call center. So if you want to give them, them a call, you can order that way as well. And the number is 0800 4700 6. So if you want to find the UK call centre, either to order, if you've got any questions, you can do that. They're really, really helpful. So that's how it all works. That's all the, the boring stuff. Um, so today on Yarn Lane, I'm really excited that we are going to be um, covering West Yorkshire spinners. Now, if you know anything about knitting and crochet, you will have heard of West Yorkshire spinners. They are a wonderful company. I've spent quite a lot of time talking to them. I was really keen to get them on board when we, before we even launched Yarn Lane. They're based in West Yorkshire, obviously. And their whole basis is that their, their story is that their yarn is reared, sheared and spun in Britain. They just sell the most, I mean, it's all quality. What they sell is beautiful quality. They work with um, the farmers and the shearers and they, they clate their yarn and they spin it and they colour it and they create the most beautiful products. This is quality, real, real quality. They also work with a lot of the top knitwear designers to create patterns and kits and books and booklets. And they also create yarns for other people. So in um, January, we've got Christine, who's winning mum, who's the queen of socks. She's in the first week of January. She, they have created her own yarn collection for her that are using the colours that she wants. So they work really closely with everybody in the industry. So they're a really sort of real kind, caring, lovely, quality company. Anyway, she's on in January using their yarn. So what I love about this, this is one of the, um, this is the first one we're going to be showing. This is all about babies. This is the most beautiful crochet blanket. It's in lovely, bright, bright but soft colours. This is knitted in their Bo Peep yarn, which is a beautiful yarn. It's, um, it's, let me just check the exact percentage. I looked at it earlier and then I can't remember. It is 52% wool and 48% nylon. And the reason for that is you've got that beautiful softness of the wool. But the um, nylon gives it that extra, means you can wash it in the machine. So it's much more durable, gives it a little bit of strength, but it's ever so soft. They have developed the Bow Peep yarn. So let me show you some of it. It's in this kit. But let's me show you, this is what the blanket looks like, but it comes in this beautiful kit. So for you to have yourself as a kit is lovely. Little handle, isn't that really lovely? Isn't that beautiful? But what a lovely gift as well. So say you know somebody who likes crochet, wants to, knit, wants to crochet this blanket, or you know somebody who's learning want, would like to do it as well. This um, blanket, so let me take the box out. This blanket is designed by Jacinta Bowie, who is one of um, a really well-known knit, knit and crochet designer, and she's designed this for them. The kit contains one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let me just open it. I really struggle with box opening. I've been struggling all morning. How did you open that, Wendy? Am I doing it right? <laughs> Thank you. So this is crocheted in a double knit yarn. It's this, it's beautiful. It's really, really soft. It's a shame you can't really feel it, but it's squidgy and it's soft. And look at the colors. They're like sort of sweeties. All colors, all colors. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's all British yarn. And then in there, in the box as well, let me move the back, but it's a beautiful packaging. You've got the pattern, everything you need to know in here. You've got the pictures of the yarn. 
all the abbreviations, all the pattern, it's all in here. I mean, this is a lovely gift kit, but it's just really nice, isn't it, when you want to make something like this and everything comes in. And I just think at £32.50, £32.50 for British made, designed in the UK, created in the UK, using British yarn. I mean, it is beautiful. It's so soft. And when they developed the bow peep yarn, the whole point behind it is they wanted to create a yarn that A, was washable, but B, was would be soft next to baby's skin. So I'm thinking with this blanket, it's perfect for putting on the pram. It's perfect for lying on the floor. You know, you, you could pop it. It's because it's, um, because it's so, because it's so soft and lovely, it folds up really nice and small. So you could pop this in your changing bag. And if you need to change the baby, you know what it's like, and you don't want to lie them on the carpet or on the floor, they'd be perfect for that. But it's just lovely, but it would last forever. It would become one of those really special blankets. You know how a lot of babies and toddlers have a blanket that's just sort of comforting, because it really is so soft, it's just beautiful. And it's crocheted. But you imagine if you had to, but if you bought that ready-made in one of these boutiques, it would be a lot. It'd be uh, eighty hundred pounds at least. And what I really like about it, I was chatting through with Wendy, is that each row is slightly different, so it's not boring either to do. So if you're um, if you're new to crochet and you haven't tried it before, I mean, this isn't you know, it's not aimed at the complete beginner. It's aimed at somebody who's picked up a crochet hook before, has done a bit of stitching, or somebody who knows somebody who can crochet who can just show you through. It's not too, it's not too wide, and each row is slightly different. So you've, you you do one row, and then you move on to another one, and the colour keeps changing, and it makes it so much easier when you're new to crochet. If the colours change, it's easier to count. So this is a beautiful blanket. So you also will need um, the crochet hooks. You need a five mil and a four mil. Those, we've got these available on the website. So we have, they're not in the kit because quite often people have got the hook already. The four mil's the blue one and the five mil's the pink one. So they're on the website if you need to buy them. If, well, if you just scroll down the website, you'll see them. But if you haven't got the hooks already, then we've got those there. So let's move on to knitting and we'll move the box. So I've got two so blankets here. Depends whether you want to do knitting. This is knitting crochet. Now this is the same yarn. It's the Bo Peep yarn, but this time it's a four ply. This is real proper, proper baby yarn. It's again, it's the 50, um, 52 percent wool and 48 percent nylon, which gives it softness and strength. So $21.99 and it's beautiful. It's a lovely soft blue car blue yarn with these white clouds all over it. Isn't it pretty? It's got a lovely deep rib border around it and it's ever so soft. It's really lovely. I mean it is, you know, it's the perfect gift for somebody who's having or had a baby. And I mean in these days a lot of people know which what they're having as well, so it's ideal. It's um all the clouds are are knitted. Shall I show you the back? You can see how they worked. So they're all knitted. So they're not. In, they're knitted, and Wendy's going to show you exactly how to do it. But it's just lovely. I mean, if you love knitting, this is a beautiful thing to do to work with. So in your bundle for the kit, you get obviously the instructions, which gives you everything you need to know, all how to do it, all the abbreviations, the charts. The instructions are the same for you get the instructions to do both so if you buy the cloud blanket bundle you will get the instructions for the heart blanket as well so you get two patterns but the yarn for one so if you're buying the cloud you get four balls of the blue and you get that's called sailboat and i love this one you get one ball of tooth fairy which is the cloud white but aren't they just really, you can really see this becoming a very, very special blanket. And, you know, a lot of baby clothes are worked in the full ply, but you'll get the full pattern to knit the cloud blanket, but the heart blanket will come with it as well. So you get four balls of sail, um, sailboat and one ball of tooth fairy, which is a great name. Now, there are less than 20 of these remaining. So if you want one of these, you need to pop it in your basket and you need to check out. 
this is just we haven't done blankets of this quality and level yet on yarn lane so i'm really pleased about that and i i think it's just really nice for to promote british companies british designers british yarn and british companies i think it's really important you know that we would like to give you a range of things but i think it is particularly at the moment really important to promote the british companies as well so the other one we have is this beautiful heart blanket now the background of this one is knitted in this um variegated yarn which makes it look actually look when i first saw a photo of it i thought oh that's really complicated because it's got all different i thought this was all pattern i thought god that's going to take ages and ages but it isn't it's the yarn is variegated so you get this amazing pattern in it but the hearts are then knitted within it in the pattern obviously you get the pattern so you get the pattern remember in the pattern is the cloud so you've got the the heart there and you've got the cloud so remember you've got both in there and in here you get two balls of oh what's this one called what's the pink one is called they've put a sticker over the name of it cover that's right so you get two balls of piglet that's so sweet melted down piglet and three balls of carousel and carousel is this um multicolored yarn so two balls of piglet three balls of carousel and the pattern now you will need needles um obviously the needles aren't in here you need 2.75 mil and you need 3.25 mil but if you have a look on the website you'll be able to find them on there okay I've got those are the 2.75. You will also need, which is quite useful, uh, stitch markers there on the website because then you can just, if you need to be counting stitches, that's quite handy. And these scissors, um, these small needlework scissors are ideal for knitting. Not for knitting, for cutting, but they're ideal for cutting when you're knitting. And the, you will need, I've only, I haven't got the 3.25 here, but the, the 2.75 mil are on the website and if you have a look under needles on the yarn lane website you will find the 3.25 mil as well okay they're not in the kit because quite often um people have these needles already but if you don't have them that's what you need also i've just got before we move on to our demonstration i've also um while i was shopping on west yorkshire spinners I found these three pattern books. <laughs> so I thought, well, I'm going to bring you these as well because these are using the Bo Peep yarn. But these are beautiful pattern collections. So this one, the Bo Peep Pure, is 100% wool. Now, obviously, this is, this is featuring all the yarns and all the different colours that they do. And it's got loads and loads of patterns in it. Obviously, if you buy um, the pattern book, you can use any yarn you want. This is double knit. But if you use their Bow Peep Pure, it's 100% wool. I mean, just look at the patterns. This, this goes from 0 to 24 months. I mean, that's the most beautiful cardigan. That is really almost like a christening cardigan. But you imagine making, I mean, look at the back on that with all the eyelets and the lace around the edge. I mean, that is just lovely. So at 12, 12 95 how many does it, does it say at the beginning? I can't remember how many patterns you get in it. We'll have a look. <gasps> look at that blanket. So this blanket, imagine if you're having a christening, the blanket matches the cardigan. That's just beautiful, isn't it? You've got um, Arthur's Stocking Stitch Sweater. That's a real classic. Again, that's from 0 to 36 months. They do look lovely in this pure wool yarn. I mean, obviously, you know, this is a pattern book. You can use whatever you want, yarn you want from it. But these are real classic, aren't they? Sophia and Samuel Moss Stitch Jackets. Oh, I, I love the photos. Look at that dress. Florence bobble dress with bloomers. Mm. <laughs> Isn't that the sweetest? Look, and it has little bloomers. Lovely. Isn't it nice? Isn't it nice? Wendy's just counting the patterns for me. 
they haven't written how many. But look, you can see how many. Look at William's cable two piece. Just look at that. <laughs> it's like trousers and a jumper. Look. Look, leggings and a jumper all knitted in cable together. That's just lovely, isn't it? And there's all the pictures of all of them as well. Lucy's cardigan. Look at that little cardigan. These are just lovely. I mean, obviously, you know, there's loads and loads of classic baby patterns out here, but there's something incredibly special about these. They're real classic. I mean, look at the pattern down there. I like the way that they have the lovely picture with the cute baby and everything, and then they've got the pattern. But then, you know, the... West Yorkshire Spinners are a, a company, they're a knitting company, they understand it, they know what knitters want. You know, they've got a photo of the front and the back laying flat, because that's what you want. While you're knitting it, you think, well, how does that join on that? And it's really useful to have as a reference. Um, Jack and Jill, that's amazing value, amazing value for money, isn't it? Um, so that's the Pure. The next book is um, Bo Peep's Storybook. This is all about the Bo Peep yarn. So look, there's a picture of all them. There's the piglet and the sailboat and the tall. So, so that's the baby Bo Peep storybook. And there's 22 designs in here. And this is using the double knit yarn. And I've got another one that's using the four ply. But this is all sorts. This is ages going um, from premature babies all the way up to age nine. So there's all sorts. This is using a, the double knit yarn. So this is the same yarn that we have in the crochet blanket. But obviously, you can use any yarn you want. I mean, they've shown you in here using their yarn. And if you want to create the, the same thing, but you can use any yarn. I mean, look at that's just lovely. Isn't that a little boy with his stripy jumper and his hat? I think the photos just really just look just a, they're just adorable, aren't they? What well behaved children they are first steps happiness but you know if you want to do some knitting for a baby a toddler a child these are lovely I mean they're very <laughs> rompers. they're very classic designs but a little bit unusual have you seen this um, little princess this uses the same yarn as the yarn that we're going to be the carousel that we're using for the um, blanket these are amazing value nine pound fifty for all of these patterns you know, you can use them again and again and again. And you can use this beautiful Bo Peep yarn or you can use yarn that you've already got. But it covers quite an age range. So we move up now. This is the uh, sort of an older children here. It's a really nice cabled hooded jumper for an older boy. So this goes um, chest size 51 to 71. So that's slightly older. Le little dress for child. There's a little beautiful little cardigan that's knitted in piglet. Love the um, charming chap slip over and sweater. So that's that same pattern is used either as a um, a slip over, or a, or it's got sleeves and you can make it a sweater. It's even got little patches on the arms. It's got a lovely little hooded cardigan with ears. All hooded cardigans should have ears. Even that one. It's like it looks like a little mouse. But if you want to do some knitting for babies, toddlers or children, that's a beautiful book. So that one all uses double knit yarn and this one use, all uses four ply. Ten adorable designs by Sarah Hatton. Now Sarah Hatton is the lady who's designed the blanket that we're selling the kit from. But look at these, aren't they lovely? I just don't know which one I like the most. Twinkle, twinkle, lace dress. That's so pretty, isn't it? Because quite often for babies, we, um, you know, this is this is knitted in 0 to 3 months and 12 to 18. Quite often it's cardigans or jumpers, but you could knit a little dress. And the fact that you can do it from 0 to 3 months, what a lovely thing to... Okay. That's lovely, isn't it? What a lovely thing to, um, to give someone as a gift for a newborn. There's a little cardigan. That's knitted in, well, the blue version of the carousel. And that cardigan. Little dress. That's pretty, isn't it? There's just so much choice for £9.50. Yeah, you would have normally, if you were buying a pattern 
sheet you, you wouldn't get this many for the money i love this the bear cub hooded jacket that's lovely and again that goes from naught month naught to 18 months okay and the fairy tale cardigan and i think that's everything aren't they lovely right anyway let's crack on with the demonstration so wendy what did you think what did you think when you got the kits it's really really hard to show the quality on screen it is isn't it it is because you just it, it's really hard to see the fluidity of it the weight of it it's and the soft. softness i know it's, it's really really it hard is beautiful it isn't really it? is and you're quite right that if you were to buy this in a boutique you definitely would be talking upwards of 80 pound Definitely. You would. And also, it's the fact that it comes beautifully packaged as well. Oh, I loved it. it. When I, I got that, it, it was just you great. Were like, I was, I was like, all oh, my Christmases have come at once. I had an early Christmas. Mm. Um, I love the way that they've used so many different stitches. Yeah. Because very often, like with any craft, it can be quite repetitive. But mm. you, you actually have to really concentrate because each row is completely different. Which is nice, isn't it? Because then it's not boring. I loved it. I mm. absolutely oh, loved good. it. Oh, uh, good. I will say it's probably not for a beginner. No, you, um, you would need to have an understanding mm. of the stitches. But other than that, if you know how to do a, a double crochet and a treble and a bobble stitch, if you know how to do all those, and if you're not too sure, you, there's loads of YouTubes that you yeah, can that's true. go and have a look. Um, because they have got a different stitch on everyone. It's just brilliant. I loved it. It's, well, it's really good. By the time you get to end, you'll have learned a lot. <laughs> It's a you really good way to you learn, isn't it? You kind of have to just jump in. So if yeah. you've used a crochet hook, you've got the idea of the chain, then you just, well... Just and the great thing it. about this is, and they also put a border on, so when you're using, and you'll see on the, the swatch, because I just did a little swatch of the stitches okay. here, you'll see that you do get all these messy ends at here. You do get yes, them. Of course, and you yeah. obviously have to, because you change your colours. Yeah. And then all you would do is just tie each end of off and weave them in, mm. but it's still going to look a little bit messy, so that's why it's great that they've just got um, a really simple border, because sometimes you can go overboard with it. Yeah, it's no, just it's really just, yeah, very simple, just that's nice, it's isn't it? It's just so pretty, and as I say, it's so hard to show the, the quality of mm. the blanket. It's just got that amazing weight It is, weight isn't it? it? I know, it, but it is so soft. And I mean, the fact, you know, you could fold it up so small, it's, it's just and, a But it keeps it's it shape. Great. I know, obviously, um, if, you, if you're just using acrylic, it, you don't get that fluidity mm. with you do with this. And it's just fantastic. I love it. I absolutely love it. This is one of my favourite blankets. And the, the colours are just, you're right, they're bright, but not bright. No, so they no. are bright, but they're, they're not in your face. Aren't they? they are, aren't they? Which is brilliant. Um, so I say I've just done a little swatch of um, just a little piece so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay. And you're right. Every row is different. And you'll so see you that by the pattern because they tell you instead of going refer to row five or refer mm. to row 12, they tell you every single row one by one so that you've got the 78, uh, 78 rows. And then it just says weave all in the ends before working the trim, which obviously you need to do. You don't want to be working the edge until you've weaved all your ends in. Right. And personally, I like to weave every so many rows. I don't okay. like, some people don't, some people leave it to the end. Mm. I don't like doing ends. I don't know anyone that likes doing ends. So I would I just hate, do, I hate I it with hate, a passion. I absolutely hate Me it. Me too. So I do it every few rows. Oh, okay, that's very so good. So I tie them, weave them in, tie them, weave them in. Yeah. And a lot of people are really scared about working in rows. Uh, often, very often when they, they start, they think, well, I need to work a square piece. If you're actually new to crochet, it's better off if you start in as a granny square mm. because it doesn't have to worry about tension. Whereas in rows, it is very hard to keep them straight. But as long as you, you just read the pattern and just take it slow, you'll be absolutely okay. fine. Okay, and just follow it. And I guess it's easier to count in a way because you know where you are with it. And also the colours delineate each row much better. I think so. I just think <laughs> it, it's just a beautiful mix of colours. So you'll see on the swatch that I have here that it covers a lot of stitches. So we've got the... and and. The really good thing that I like about this is it's UK because um, very often, yes. very yeah. often you do have the mm. American, and it's exactly the same. It doesn't it doesn't matter if it's UK or US. No, but it's just remembering. Isn't it, it is. You have to switch between yeah. the two. So this is there for this you. This is UK. And, and does it say that as well? In, yeah, in the pattern it will tell you. So we've got um, the abbreviations, 
and it tells you what each of them mean. So tell, that's fine. So yeah. you'll know what you're doing. Yeah. And also this is saying, now, I'm, I'm not really sure about the skill levels because what does skill level of three equate to? So it's a three out of five. So yeah. to me, that would say you would have to have Knowledge. knowledge you'd have to have yeah. knowledge or you need to have someone to sit with you and help you definitely with it. so if you were definitely. a beginner but you knew someone who could crochet this would be a really good thing if you wanted to teach someone to crochet to buy this for them and say well i'll start you off and once you'd gone through a few rows with them they could probably then that's that's an amazing go on that's it. an amazing thing to say because it's crochet and knitting it is very repetitive once you've learnt the stitches yes. you can just make wonderful creations by maybe doing an increase and then a decrease because then so you're going to get that wave effect. So maybe you've got a friend effect. or a daughter or granddaughter who's expecting a baby and this would be a brilliant way to Fantastic. teach them because you could you know rather than just going to we'll just do change you could sit with them and do this and, that, and it wouldn't take long by the time it, they're on row five i know i've done a, a baby swatch mm. here but no and it wouldn't and then by the time you get to the end of the row you'll know what you're doing because yeah. it is repetitive because you're doing the same thing over and over so it's a really good way and if someone wants to learn exactly you'll see that in here with the sequence so if i just show you that i've got up to row 12 mm. so i'm just going to um or if i know i've got up to row 11 because i'm just going to draw um, join in and this i think is called pumpkin I don't know why I want to say it's called pumpkin, but I want to, oh, right, brilliant, yes, because here, and the good thing about this, yes, this one's called pumpkin, it tells you the colours and what their names That's are. That's nice, isn't it? It's brilliant. We've got a message from Stephanie. Just ordered this, can't wait to get started, love the colours, absolutely. You it will is, not be disappointed. It is beautiful. As I said, it's so difficult to show everyone the fluidity, and that's always what yeah. I look for when I'm looking in a blanket. Um, and of course, if you go if you go up or down uh, a hook size, then you change it again because if you do a smaller hook than needed, it'll make it tighter and not as fluid. Or if you go up a hook size, it's going to make it even more fluid. Yeah. I would stick to the size that they've done here because it's absolutely perfect. So you start with a bigger hook because yeah, so you, you start with the um, you start with the five with because the five, yeah. in crochet when you do a foundation chain mm. because we're working in a um, in rows you want that foundation chain you don't want it to be tight right so if you go up a hook mm. size then you would do the foundation chain in that and then you would change to the small hook and then do your rows and then very often I'm not sure I didn't get to the the edging but very often the edging you then go back down a hook size to make it a bit tighter oh, okay. so I'm, I'm not sure what the trim does say I will have a look they're calling it a trim um, oh no, they're still using the formula, so they're using it um, to yeah, go around so the edge. Yeah, you just need the two. So if you've got hooks already, but we, that's why quite often people don't put the hooks in because it's a bit frustrating if you've already got them. Personally, I, yeah, I've crocheted for so, so many years. I, well, you'll see mm. that I have my, my hook that I love and I use. There are so many different hooks out there and it is a personal choice. Yeah, it is. But these ones are brilliant. The ones that you have are fantastic. They're so lovely. I use the zinc ones. Yeah, they're really nice. But in the description on the website, um, I have put in there what hook size you'll need. Brilliant. So what we're going to do here, and you'll see along each of these mm. um, rows, there is a sequence. And if I show you the pattern, it will tell us, so I'm going to do row 11 now. Now the thing, the sequence is between the two stars. And then you simply keep repeating that along the row. So for this one, I'm going to do a treble two increase, then two treble, and it tells you exactly what you're going mm. to do. So if I just start, I've, it's told me to join in pumpkin, which is this one, <laughs> pumpkin. which is lovely. I know, they have got nice names. I think all the names are in here as well. Now, a lot of people actually join their colour on the last stitch of the previous round. Do you, do you crochet, don't you? Yes. Yeah. So course. do you? See, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Do you? Because I would finish that last stitch with the new colour, but some people do, some people don't, but I'm not going to for this one. So I'm just going to put my new colour in. And um, no, I, if I'm starting a new round, I start it in the new round. Do you? Yes, yeah, sometimes going, I start it on the but last. But if I'm going round, then I, to start it, then I will start on the one before. Definitely, and so then you, you get that transition, don't them, you? Yes, if you're changing colour. And then all we're going to do, and it's telling me here, it's saying chain three. So I just chain three. So I've changed my colour. There we go, so that's one chain and two and three and the reason we're doing a chain three and it will change some of them you will only do two depending on what stitch you're doing now because i'm going to be working in uk trebles i need to get the height because the treble yeah. is quite a tall stitch so that's why i'm doing three chain at the beginning and i'm going to turn and some turn and then three chain some three chain then turn I, I tend to turn after and then it's telling me to do a one treble so i'm going to do a one treble in the next stitch so to treble is yarn over insert hook into the next stitch 
Now, some people go between the chain space. I go in the stitch at the top. Now, you can see at each of the stitches are made up of little Vs here. Mm -hmm. And just below those Vs, you'll see a space. And that's where I go into. I actually go into the stitch. I don't know what they've done. Have they done that? Yes, they, they, have, they have. They have yeah. done that. So to do a treble, you do yarn over, insert into the next space, yarn over and pull through. So I've now got three loops on my hook. Yarn over, take the first two, and yarn over, take the second two. And that is a treble stitch. So then it's telling me to do a, a treble increase. Now, when you increase, you simply just go in the same stitch again and again. So okay. if you do a two treble increase, that means you need to go in there twice. So I'm going to do that treble in there again. So do the treble, but then I'm going to go back in there in that same space and do another treble. And then it's telling me just to two treble. So I, the next two stitches, I'm going to do one treble in each. Now I'm not, I, I, you can see the stitches, how I'm forming them, because as I say, this, this to me is not actually a very, uh, a, a complete beginner's project. Um, but I just want to show you how easy it is to form these. And then it's telling me to do three treble together. So to treble together, we're going to work over the next three stitches and make them into one. So all we do is yarn over, insert hook, yarn over, pull through. Now before I finish that treble, I yarn over and go into the next one, yarn over and pull through. And then I've got to do three, so I go into the next one. So I'm into the top of that next one. So I've got all those hooks, loops on the hook, and then I yarn over and pull them off. So that's now trebled three together. So this and increasing and decreasing is what creates the wave. So exactly. So that's what creates the height. Mm -hmm. So in here, we've done, actually this row is brilliant. So you've got that, I don't know what it's called, that one, the, t the tearly colour. It's called Seahorse. Wow, what a lovely name. So, <laughs> but that, called sea that height was created by working a half treble and a double crochet. Right. And a treble. So when you work different stitches in a row, they go up and down or you can increase and decrease. So an increase will make it fan out, mm. a decrease will bring it in. So you can create your height that way. And this is the amazing thing about this pattern is that they've used the stitches in different ways to create the waves. Yeah, really, so you know, I mean, the thing with crochet it looks like really complex, but once you've learned the chain and you've learned a double crochet or try, it's all the same thing. If you can chain, which obviously is the first thing mm. that you would learn, um, and a double crochet, a treble, and then there's another thing called, a, another stitch called a bobble stitch, which I will just quickly show you in a okay. moment. If you can do all those, then you can create yeah. this. But if you can chain, you can learn. You can learn mm. double crochet. I love treble. your thinking, you know, I love your thinking. Really, it's the key is learning to chain and everything else is all about counting and practice. And, and I actually, I don't like um, wasting anything. A lot of people say chain, unpick, chain, unpick. I don't do that. So I chain and then I use that braid to make Christmas trees and little mm. trees and things um, because I don't like to unpick things. I just like to make things from So stuff. we've got less than 20 available of this blanket left. So if you do want it, um, remember, you need to put it in your basket and check out. It comes beautifully packaged. You get everything you need except for the hooks are in there. And it's beautiful West Yorkshire spinners, UK, British. Mm. That's British what I like yarn. about it. And it is a mix. It is a mix of um, wool and nylon, and that's to give it the softness and the strength. It's the fluidity that just gets it me. It gives it the fluidity, but it, you know, and they've spent quite some time developing this to get it just right for babies. And you can chuck it in the washing machine, and it will wash. And, and wash that's and another wash. thing, because obviously, you know, babies make mess. <laughs> I know, and it's really, you know, and they've and in the pattern books as well, they've created beautiful patterns, but they've got to be washable, haven't they? Absolutely. You know, They've got to for be babies, practical, they have to and that's what it does. So, but over, you know, we have only got less than twenty of these left. So, if you do want it, and we've only got twenty minutes, so Ooh, um, lovely. Do you want to finish off that last bit, and then well, we'll move so on? I'm to I'm not the, going. Um, yes, I'm not going to carry on um, the sequence. But okay, then so we'll go go on, move on to knitting. So yes, then we can move on. So I'll just show you. So we've gone through the treble, and the only other stitches that you'll need to do is a double crochet. Now, double crochet is one of the smaller stitches. So we don't in, we don't wrap our yarn round first. We just simply insert the hook into the next stitch, and then we yarn over and pull through. So we have two stitches on the hook, 
and then yarn over and pull them through. So that is a double crochet stitch. So that's really easy as mm. well. And then the last one that you're going to need is a bobble stitch. And it sounds difficult, but it really isn't. And these are all worked in the same stitch. So we put our yarn over and insert the hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. And we simply do that another four times. So yarn over, insert into the stitch and pull through, yarn over and pull through. That's twice, three times and four times. And we now should have 11 hooks on our loop and then we just yarn over and pull them all off. And that's created our little bobble stitch. Beautiful. And that's all, that's, that's as hard as it gets. And that is, yeah, <laughs> that's as hard as it gets. So you can watch this back. If you buy the kit, watch when you're doing that again. It'll be really easy to the understand. It, they're, they're all explained in here, all the stitches. So oh, is it? It really, is. Really they all tell you how to do it. Just just sit and read it. Mm. But if you if you crochet, you will know these, probably know these stitches anyway. Yes, so you may but, just But if you're refresh. new to it, you certainly can learn. I love your thinking, you see, because that's what I'm like. And, mm. and I, I love to hear that people are thinking, oh, maybe I can't do that. But, you know, I'm going to have a go. Just give it a go. Just give it a go. Because by the time you get to the end of the row, you'll be brilliant at it. And the great thing about crochet, it's really easy to undo. I just rarely, rarely that I do something new in crochet that I don't undo. But often you'll get sort of halfway along, oh, and then you just undo it. And it, it's not like knitting. It undoes a lot quicker and easier and then you can just go again so it's a really good way of learning loads of new stitches that's the one thing i love about crochet mm, is that it's doing. it's very portable it's very versatile mm. and you can unpick it so quickly and i will just say though with, with these there is a sequence so when you've got the ripples mm. the sequence above like this one here did need to go in certain stitches but you'll get that you, yeah, you will as, as you start it doing as you it along. you will see yeah. that uh, but yeah please don't be scared of this and as i say if ever anyone wants any help then you know I'm yeah, more just than ask happy. Wendy. just ask me she'll come around your house and everything <laughs> yeah she particularly likes christmas day to be phoned <laughs> she'll come round just sit here and hold the hook for you right let's move on to knitting let's move on to okay. the knitting so we've got the heart blanket and now remember the pattern that you get with the heart blanket and the cloud blanket all comes in one pattern so if you buy the heart blanket kit you get the yarn for the heart blanket if you buy the cloud bank blanket kit you get the yarn from the cloud blanket but you get the pattern for both whichever one you buy so there's the heart blanket which features piglet and carousel and then this is the cloud blanket oh i've just dropped one that features sailboat and tooth fairy and these are knitting okay <laughs> so that's why i've chosen them just dropped one so that we can have a bit of knitting and a bit of crochet these are beautiful aren't they i the promise you have plate. been knitting with them i have <laughs> i have been crocheting with them they are lo love i love the fall plates so soft isn't it? now with because i know when you first saw them you thought mm. they were the same uh both of them are the same but oh that one's double knit isn't mm. it so that's a little bit weightier where these are so soft and light which is what <laughs> i really love about yes, them they are. but of course because they've got that wool element in them they're going to be really warm and yes snuggly. really yeah very warm now and snuggly. Uh, you ha you have noticed i have noticed that with the blue you get four blue and one white yes and with the others you get a three and a two now the reason is the blue has the outside the edging is done in blue where mm. the outside of the pink is done in the piglet yes. I love that name Piglets. I absolutely love Piglets that name and tooth fairy I like I love them yeah so that's why there's a difference because the Yes, I didn't want people to think that you may be, why, why do you get a different yeah, amount no, in each? Yeah, it's just the way it, it's It's literally combined. the border and that's all it is. Now, I would actually say, if you are going to be doing any of these, if you're going to buy the books and these patterns, I lost count, there are loads of patterns in that book. If you are going to be doing them but not using the wool, then you, you really do need to be do a little sample. You need to do your gauge right, check okay. yeah, because walls are all Well, different. also everyone knits differently. So always check your tension first. Always, anyway. always so do a little yarn tension you swatch. Um, but these obviously with blankets, it doesn't really matter. No, no, this and hasn't got to fit. This is intarsia. Now, mm. I love intarsia. So what's intarsia, Wendy? Well, it's, <laughs> it's well, as you can see, it's like knitting. Changing colour. That's the one. Okay. <laughs> so intarsia, you change one colour at a time. So you only ever have one colour. You're working one colour at a right. time. And normally you would not carry the wool in intarsia across the back. Um, you would just leave it in their colour blocks. But if you notice on both of these, and in actually the one that I'm doing now, the you can see the bottom of the cloud, the other, yes. sorry, the other end. So the mm. other end there. 
So you've got the, you can see it, you've got the two different um, yes, it methods changed, there. Yes. So the top of the cloud, they've the carried, carried the yarn across mm. and the bottom of the cloud, they haven't. Right. So they've just started the new colour. Now what I would advise everyone to do is don't carry your yarn across between each. They haven't, but don't be tempted to carry your yarn across each cloud because it's going to make it like really thick and clumpy, which you yeah. don't want. So if you have bob bobbins at home mm -hmm. and all they do is you just wind little bits of wool enough for the, the emblem, the, the motif mm. um, and hang them at intervals, then you'll be able to change colour with the, with the bobbins rather than carrying the wool all yeah. the way across. Or you can just wind small balls. That's brilliant. And I, before before bobbins came out, I used to put it on a piece of card. Okay. And just, but have them hanging yeah. at the back because what you don't want is long bits of wool all over the place. No, and you you'll just want, get in, so you need to wind off. You'll a get in a real pickle to do it. And that's and so this. But this is, is a really good way to start if you've not done intarsia before. It's a really good way to start it, isn't it? Because it's quite simple. It's very simple. Literally two colours. Mm. So you're not having to worry. I mean, an intarsia is one colour at a time, but that doesn't yeah. mean you only need to keep it to two colours. You can do as many colours as you want. It's just beautiful. It's though, gorgeous. Isn't it? what, it's like a real heirloom. I cannot, I cannot stress, and I know I'm sounding mm. like a broken record. Mm. Um, they're just so soft they're and they're just so beautiful. Soft. Yeah, they're just so soft. With, with um, Intarsia, you follow a chart. Now, I'm a lover of chart because I actually design crochet charts and I love it. So I'm really, really at home mm. with these. But for those of you that haven't followed them before, then you simply just work from right to left, left to right, right to left. And the ladies or gentlemen, I don't know who has actually designed this particular one, does what I do. Sarah. Rebe Sarah, Sarah. Hatton. Has she done all of them? Wow. Yes. So what Sarah has done is what I do, is I actually put the number where you start. Because yes. a lot of people put one, two, three, four, all the way at one side. But Sarah's done what I do, and I just put the number at the yeah, beginning no, of the row. Yeah, the Yes, so it, is a bit, it is different to if you were doing cross stitch. Yes. So it's you, done in a different way. It is. You need to go one way, but it works. But it makes other. absolute sense. To, to see, to me, that makes way. complete sense yes. because that's yeah. how I do it. So you would start with row one and work to the end, and then you'd come back with row two. Mm. So row one for me are going to be my plain, and row two are going to be my pearls because we're actually working in stocking stitch. So one row plain, one row pearl. Now you will see because I'm just doing a tiny, tiny. I, I wouldn't have had time to go all the way across the row, so I'm not getting that striped effect, and that's only because I haven't done the right amount of stitches across. So mine is just looking a bit hickety pickety. Okay, but that's it's only because mm. I haven't done the proper right. row. So all we do in here is now I'm on row, and it's a good idea to have a stitch um, a row counter because if the telephone goes or if you go out of the room mm. sometimes you can't remember where you are so I'm on row 11 so and what you do you read the pattern and it will tell you how many stitches go right a bit it will tell you how many stitches to do before you start your motif but because I'm just doing one just to show yeah, you, okay. I so you know. You just follow the pattern. You just follow the pattern. It, it? And then all we're going to do, so on row 11, I know that I've got to come one stitch before the one I did on the row before. And that's how I read my patterns. I don't actually count them. So I'm just going to knit. And I do apologise about my bent needle. <laughs> bent my needle. <laughs> we need to send you but some it's nice. Very old. Oh, do the, you know, I must have a in. thousand needles. <laughs> <laughs> so you just knit. Until, thank you, Paul. <laughs> I can hear him today. Hear him. So I need to knit the stitch before the one on the previous. And what you need to do is you need to carry, and this is really important, you need to carry the non-working yarn across. Right. So I'm carrying it across the back. And you need to carry it every two or three stitches. Okay. And the reason, and it does state it in the book, is you don't want small fingers to get in big loops yeah. behind the yes. motifs. And then all we do is I now going to knit the next colour, but I'm going to take it to the right of this one so that as I knit it, it's picking up that one and taking it along with me. So I do just a couple of stitches. And now what I want to do is I want to go under and pick that wool up again. So you're just twisting. So I'm just twisting round. Not knitting with it. Not knitting. Twisting. I'm still knitting with the, the the pink, whatever that, I can't remember what that one was called. Piglet. Piglet, of course, you remember that. So all I'm doing is twisting it around and you want to do this really lightly and loosely because what you don't want to do is pull it tight because then it's all going to scrunch up. 
So we do have six minutes to do this, don't we? Probably so five now. Probably, now. <laughs> Probably four now. So I'm just every couple of stitches, I'm just twisting that wool. And, and the cloud it. is exactly the same. It, it is exactly the same, but if you can see on the bottom of the cloud, on yes. they, they did it at the end, but then didn't carry it across. So, so that, that's up to you. You have a choice. Sort of choice. Yes. Choose so you, whether you use separate balls of yarn or whether you carry it across. If I'm honest with the cloud, I would probably do the bottom technique, mm. but the hearts, there's not many stitches across the heart. So I would be tempted just to carry it across the back, but you don't so every want to be pulling it every twist two. twist the yarn over. I'm twisting the yarn. Just and once? Then just once, just once, because all I'm trying to do is pick it up and take it with me and carrying it across the back of that motif. And then a couple of stitches and I'm twisting it but I'm not pulling. I'm not pulling that, the wool that's following me tight because I don't want that to be tight. And now I know that I've got to do. I'm just reading my chart. I've got to do one more stitch. So I'm creating the heart shape. And these are such fun. And it, it's it's made a real change for me. I don't normally knit in four ply, or it's a long, long time since I've knitted in four ply, mm. and it's lovely. It's fantastic now, and it just makes it a bit more interesting to oh. knit as well, doesn't it? Having all these little motifs on it. It does, and you'll see that there's two there's two motifs on these, and there is a very valid reason for that because otherwise the hearts would all be going the same way. So you want Indeed. to get to the other end yes. and have them facing yeah. inwards. Yes, and it's, it's the same yes. with the clouds. So the clouds, whichever way you look at it, they're the yeah, right way. Yeah, so up. that way they go that way. That then way, just, and then um, when you get to the bottom. The other way. way. So if I show you them joined together like that, yes, because you want them going the same way. So just remember that. Just make sure that as you get to the next yes. motif, you 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 do because it is turned round upside down. And then all we would do is, if you can imagine, I've just just done one to show you, but then you would do a few more stitches, and then you'd start the motif that you'd yeah. be doing the next one. So and that's what I am saying when you would have just this one on a bobbin just this one <coughs> and then you wouldn't carry it behind yeah. to the next so motif. yeah so you don't carry between yes, so if you look on the back of those the back. yes that would be great always like to have a look at the back oh me too um, that's a fact well i didn't mm. i messaged you and said please can you have a look yes at the back and i did me? i had to take a photo because these were sent to us from west yorkshire spinner so i had to take a photo of the back to send mm. to wendy because it's interesting you can see from here that it isn't carried between each heart so basically you have one the um carousel you carry all the way across mm but the piglet has its own little ball. And that's um, what I, I mean, I keep going on about the fluidity of it. If mm. you'd have carried the wool over, it makes it stiff. Yeah. And the, there's no, you could, there's no stretch in and it. And also it's safer, like you say, because there's no fingers getting caught in that. You haven't got the yarn going all the way across. Also there's less every tangling couple of stitches, going on. Every couple of stitches do it. Yeah. Um, but you will, it, it is advisable to either wrap them around on a piece of cardboard or to get some bobbins to do yeah. that. And then when you get to the end of the row, you just put your row counter up one mm. um, and then follow back. So if you stop mid flow, you'll know which one that you're on. And then the next row is exactly the same, but it's a pearl stitch. So then you would go back uh, okay. pearl. Yeah, and you just and then follow the chart. Just follow the chart. But it's a really good way to learn. You know, it's a blanket. It's not something with the tension that fits. It's a really good way to learn this if you haven't done it before. But it is just, it is something that's a real designer shop, it is. isn't it? A little it is. baby boutique. But you can make this yourself. I, I, I was so excited when I saw it. It's, it's just, just like, I know, it's just really nice. It's nice to do different sorts of on yarn lane we're trying to cover lots of different genres and qualities and price points but you know this is a beautiful, beautiful and then yarn, for the ribbing you just company. use the smaller needles okay so you knit three pearl and three knit three nice. I, and it's um, nice to have that rib round the edge isn't it well thanks so mm. much wendy oh, that's been brilliant it. we've thank really you. enjoyed you yes um thank you from susan how much <laughs> i don't know what uh, what I would, mm. um, I would tend to do more than I needed. Um, okay. I know it's probably a little bit of a waste, but I know I do corner to corner charts and mm. that's very much where you have a colour change, but it's very hard. I mean, I guess if you just did a few stitches and weighed it, you'd know how many, but I, I would yeah, just... Yeah, I mean, if you want to be precise, then knit a heart, 
Hmm. Unravel it, and then you'll know how much you need if you want to be absolutely precise. But I would tend to do a little bit more than I yeah, needed. Because you can always then use, if you've got too much on there, you can always um, use that for the next heart. But there again, if you haven't got quite enough on there, you can, you can always join, join it. it. So it's, it's hard to say really how much. You don't want them so heavy that they weight it down yeah. as you're trying to knit. But you're quite right. If you were just to knit one and unpick just it, knit you one know. heart, unpick it, then you'll know how much and have a little bit extra. But. Um, Anyway, that's what I would do. <laughs> very hard to tell, though. I'm going to take that and move forward because yeah. I think that's a good idea. But, that is. That's but a sometimes very good idea. that doesn't work with everything. Does it? But no, <laughs> saying that because that would be amazing because then you'd get the feel of it and yes. then the next hearts yeah. would just be. Amazing. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Wendy. Thank you. Um, it's been a pleasure working with you today. I'm Beautiful so excited. blankets. Um, so let's just run through the um, kits one more time. So we have the heart blanket, which is here. You can see it's got the um, the hearts going one way at one end and the hearts at the other end. Um, in the kit, you get the full instructions, but you get the instructions to make the heart blanket and the and the cloud blanket all in the same pattern. So you get two instructions for the price of one. Um, in the heart blanket, you get two balls of piglet, which is this beautiful, soft, very subtle pink colour. It's a, like a dusty pink. And then you get three balls of the carousel, which is this variegated yarn. So it gives the effect that you're creating a pattern as you're knitting, but you're not because it's all in the yarn. So that's lovely. This is a four ply yarn. Um, it's 52% wool and 48% nylon, which gives it strength but and washability, but also gives it incredible softness and fluidity. So it's really lovely. The needles are not in the kit, but they are available on the website. You need 3.25 mils and 2.75 mils. Um, then we've got the cloud. The, again, the instructions are available for both. So in there, you've got um, the heart and the cloud. So you can choose. So you get both. So when you've done one, you can do the other. And not obviously, because it's a repeating pattern, once you've knitted it and you've done your kit, if you think, well, I want to make another one, I want to make it bigger, really simple to increase the size because you can increase the width by just repeating the pattern. You can increase the length by just doing more. You know, when you've knitted one, you'll know how to do that. So, you know, you can use both of both charts. In this kit, you get four balls of sailboat this beautiful soft sky blue really a real bit of lovely soft one and you get one ball of tooth fairy which is this lovely white it's not really super bright white but it's a nice soft white i mean the colors have been developed definitely to go because they match what you know the things that will suit baby and because it's a four ply it's just beautiful beautiful so the crochet blanket this has been a real winner a real winner today i mean it is a beautiful blanket we only we only have a few left in stock so if you want it you need to pop it in your basket you need to check out it's knitted in a double knit yarn which is the bow peep yarn so it's 52 percent wool and 48 percent nylon so you can machine wash it it's extremely soft soft and very good quality it's you know british yarn from a british company so, and it's really nice. And then they use the British designers. So it's really important, you know, that, it's that we're supporting industries, particularly the yarn in industry at the moment. And these colours, they're like sweeties, sweetie, sweetie colours. They all come, it all comes packaged in this beautiful box with the pattern, which is over there, so I haven't got that in a minute. But it comes with the printed pattern. Um, and that's the outside of it. So there we go. So you get, so it's a brilliant, it's a gift. It's a really nice gift. If you want to teach someone how to crochet or you know someone who likes crochet, this is a lovely way to learn. It's quite, it's almost like a sampler bank blanket so that you are learning a new stitch and a new technique on each page. So um, you need a four mil and a five mil hook and they are available on the website. You need both hooks for this. So if you haven't got them yourself, just scroll down on the website, we've got them. We've also got row counters, stitch markers this is all on the website underneath the different categories if you need any of those thank you so much for joining us today we will see you um, on yarn lane on wednesday for a roundup for a roundup show of kits and books looking forward to that and i will see you soon <laughs>